Hello, everyone. Welcome to our mock live class today. Hope everyone is doing well. My name is Kate Deary. I am an assistant director for recruitment and admissions here at Geese Online, and I look forward to spending the next hour with you. Our time today will be spent providing you with an opportunity to understand how live lectures are delivered and have a chance to interact in this setting that is part of our high engagement component of GEESE courses. We offer three online master's degree programs, the IMBA, the IMSA, and the IMSM, as well as 13 graduate certificates, which are 12 credit hour credentials that cover topics like strategic leadership and management, accounting data analytics, or something like digital marketing. GEESE graduate level online programs are innovative in their delivery. They are stackable, affordable, and fully online for full-time working professionals. If you're new to, to GEESE here today, GEESE courses balance foundational material shared on the Coursera platform with an interactive high engagement component, which includes a live class each week, group projects, faculty office hours, networking, and also being part of the larger University of Illinois College. Before we get started learning about leading organizations with Professor Bednar today, I want to cover just a few housekeeping items. I see some of you have your cameras turned on, so thank you. I encourage you to all turn your cameras on so we can see you as we have conversations within our class today. Please note that you are all muted in order to minimize background noise during this session. There might be moments when Professor Bednar invites you to participate and our technical team will unmute your microphone for you. If you have questions, please use the raise hand feature and we will call on you. We will also have a breakout session today, um, which will allow you to participate with your fellow session attendees. Lastly, we really want you to feel comfortable participating in the chat and feel free to put comments and responses to the professor there. I am so excited for our, our live session today. In this mock class, Professor Bednar will lead a, a very interactive session that will provide an introduction to the core leadership class on designing and managing organizations that he teaches within the IMBA and IMSM programs. During this session, you will discuss some of the common challenges faced within organizations and learn to apply a framework that will help them better understand these challenges. This mock live class will give you an idea of what those interactive live sessions are like within Geese Online. Professor Bednar is an Associate Professor of Business Administration, Academic Director of Experiential Learning, and Robert and Karen May Faculty Fellow at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. His primary research interests include corporate governance, executive leadership, and the relationship between organizations and the media. He joined the University of Illinois in 2008 after receiving his PhD in strategic management from the University of Texas at Austin. And then he also holds a BS from Brigham Young University, graduate, excuse me, graduating cum laude in 2002. He has received numerous teaching awards, inclu including the Geese College of Business Excellence in Graduate Teaching Award in 2019 and the Dean's Impact Award in 2018. He also serves on the Editorial Review Board for Strategic Management Journal and Academy of Management Journals. He currently teaches BATM 509 in the IMBA and IMSM programs. With that, I am going to turn it over to Professor Michael Bednar. Enjoy. Fantastic. Thank you, Kate. And thanks to all of you. Thanks for coming to join us this afternoon or whatever time it is, wherever in the world you may be. Uh, I'm I'm really excited to spend the next hour with you. And, you know, we, we call this a mock live session, but we'll, what we really want to do here today is give you a realistic preview of what our live sessions are really all about. So what I'd like to do is bring you into what we like to do in, in, in my class, which is one of the required classes in our iDegrees programs, and give you a little bit of a flavor for what we, what we try to do. So let's go ahead and dive in. And Kate, hey, thanks for that really nice intro. I'll give you just a little bit of background about myself. So I've actually, I've grown up around universities. So I, I grew up, if you, maybe if we have any college uh, football or college basketball fans out there, you might recognize this, uh, th this pig. So this is the mascot at the University of Arkansas. So I actually grew up in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I cheered for the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks. 
I did my undergraduate degree, as Kate said, at, at BYU, and I studied accounting. And BYU actually has an amazing accounting program. It's always ranked as one of the top uh, two or three accounting programs in the in the country. And I thought I was going to go work at one of the big five accounting firms. And notice that I said big five, right? So at the time, there were five big accounting firms, one of which I had a job offer at. Uh, you may have heard of it. It's called Arthur Anderson. And I actually had a job offer at Arthur Anderson right about the time where there were lots of stories in the Wall Street Journal about Arthur Anderson. They weren't necessarily positive stories. They were all about Arthur Anderson's relationship with Enron. And I'll always remember, I called the HR rep in the office where I, where I had a job offer. And I said, this does not sound good. What's going on? And this HR rep, she, she assured me that this was all going to blow over, that this was no big deal. Luckily, I had the foresight not to take that job uh, because I would have been fired before I even started. And so I decided not to not to take that job with Arthur Anderson. I decided to go back to school and I did my Ph.D. at the University of Texas. So you might recognize that, uh, that, that that's another team that I cheer for, the, the 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 Texas Longhorns. And so I did my Ph.D. at the University of Texas, uh, studied corporate governance, and I continue to do research in that area today. In 2008, I started here at the University of Illinois. And so I've been here for quite a while now. Uh, I've been here since 2008. And it's just been a fantastic place for me professionally. It's been great for my family. And I've really enjoyed uh, my time here in the mid Midwest here at Geese. So in addition to teaching this class, I also do research. Um, if you ever can't sleep at night, you can look up some of my research. Uh, you can uh, take take a deep dive into that. But most of my research is uh, about corporate governance. It's about how do we hold leaders accountable for what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, I've done some research recently about reputation. And what are some of the things that affect the reputation of the firm? How do leaders of organizations affect the reputations of the firms that they lead? Um, what happens when firms engage in controversial governance practices? What does that do to the reputation of the firm as a whole? And Kate alluded to this, but in addition to research and teaching, I'm also the academic director of what's called our Magelli Office of Experiential Learning. We do some really cool stuff here at Geese. We try to make learning way more hands-on and so just to give you an example, every junior undergrad at Geese does a real life project as part of a class where we partner teams of students with a real client organization, and then they have a chance throughout the semester to, to solve a real business problem. And so I, I've, I've helped to lead that effort. And we do projects with over 300 organizations every single year. If you work in an organization that's interested in partnering with Geese, get in touch with us and we'd love to uh, yeah, we, 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 we'd love to connect and have you have some of our students work on a, work on a project with you. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this class and how this class operates. So what we try to do in this class today, what we're going to do is what, what we do in what's called a live session, right? And so in live sessions, we'll do case studies, right? You'll, you'll come to class prepared to discuss a case study, just like you would in a face-to-face -face class. You'll have a chance to share experiences. Uh, we'll do breakout groups. We'll, we'll do a breakout group, for example, today. So what we try to do is make these live sessions very interactive, right? It's not just me talking at you for 90 minutes, uh, but, but really we have an opportunity to interact both with the material and with each other. Between the live sessions, you have some responsibilities. So many of you may have heard of Coursera, which is a large MOOC platform. And so... Part of the preparation for these live sessions is uh, found on Coursera. So I've made a bunch of videos that go along with this class. And so you'll watch those videos. You'll do some short assessments uh, to make sure you're tracking with uh, uh, just, just, just the content of those videos. We'll have some readings. So in preparation for a live session, typically we'll have a case or we'll have a couple readings that you'll be expected to do so that you can come to this live session prepared to engage. Uh, prepared to come and share your experiences and so we so we can learn from each other. And we also have platforms that allow you to engage throughout the throughout the week. Um, so we use some technology that allow you to uh, really get in touch with your classmates to share experiences amongst yourself, not just in the live sessions, but throughout the week as well. So again, uh, we th this this is an online degree, but it really is amazing how interactive, uh, this th this can be. This is not uh, this is not online education of ten years ago. It's really amazing uh, what technology has facilitated uh, us to be able to do. 
So let's talk about this class. So like I said, I'm going to give you a preview of the, the class that I teach in our iDegrees programs. This class is all about organizations. And organizations are fascinating to me. Or organizations solve lots of the world's problems. They also create lots of the world's problems. Organizations provide opportunities for us to grow and develop and work together in ways that we could never do individually. And organizations create all kinds of frustration for us. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've, I've experienced lots of frustration trying to get things done within organizations. So what we're going to try to do in this class is we're going to try to understand some of the fundamental issues that organizations face. And what we're going to try to do with that knowledge is hopefully, as a result, we'll be able to better design more effective organizations and we'll be better managers and leaders within those organizations. So again, the, the, the title of this class is Designing and Managing Organizations. That's what we're really trying to, we're, we're trying to learn some fundamentals so that we can be better designers of organizations and better managers within organizations. And we'll, in, in this class, we talk about a whole host of different topics, right? We start off when we talk about purpose and how important purpose is in an, in an organization and how if we get the purpose right, then a lot of the other design choices that we make will start to fall into place. We talk about governance. How do we make sure that we have a system in place so that we actually pursue the intended purpose of the organization? We talk about design. What are some of the structures that we can choose as we're trying to design what's the right organization? What are some of the pitfalls of those different structures? We'll talk about growth. A lot of organizations strive to grow and yet growth sometimes kills companies, right? And so we'll talk about what, how, how do you manage growth more effectively? What are some of the pros and cons of different ways that, 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 that companies grow? We'll talk about how organizations interact with the external environment. Um, how can you design an organization that can be more flexible in an ever-changing world? So, so that's really the first half of the class. The second half of the class, we talk more about individual managers and how do we manage some of the common problems of organizations? How do we become better change agents, right? We'll talk about the problem of change. What are some models that we can use to effectively uh, lead, lead a change agent or a change initiative within our organization? We'll talk about culture. How do you build uh, a, a winning culture in your organization? We'll talk about ethics. As a manager, how do you make ethical decisions? And We'll, we'll talk about leadership. What does that mean in the context of organizations? So again, in this class, we talk about a lot of really fun stuff uh, and a lot of really applicable stuff. I would imagine uh, that some of you have faced some of the same challenges that I've seen in organizations. In fact, one way to think about this class and what this class is all about is it's really about problems, right? It's, it's about problems in organizations. How do we recognize those? How do, we, how do we deal with those and how do we better manage in spite of those different problems? So first thing I'd like to do is just get some feedback from some of you. You can answer in the chat. I'd also, if, if we've got some brave souls that would raise their hand and maybe share with us as well, as you think about this idea of designing and managing organizations, what are some of the problems that you're facing right now in your organizations that might be relevant to what we're talking about in this class? So don't be shy. Go ahead and uh, raise your hand and and answer in chat. And we'd love to we'd love to hear from a couple of you. Let's see. Is it my my eyes are? Let's see. Is it is it is it Lindsay? Yes, that's me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Thanks for volunteering. Um, Great to hear from you. Sure. No problem. So some problems I've seen is with uh, customer service. I know that everyone can relate. Um, on the phone where you're trying to get an answer for something and you get the runaround and then you call again and the second time you get another answer from someone else and then you hang up and you call a third time and and you try to get a consensus and so if you call eight people you say okay five or six people said this answer three or three people said this answer so what am I supposed to believe and usually you can't get a supervisor on the phone so I think that's one main uh, issue I face with uh, trying to get information from a company or a service to know what's what. Um, yeah. So. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Lindsay. Great. I'm sure many of us can relate to that, to that problem. How many of us have spent too much of our lives on trying to get in touch with the right person that can help us, right? And it's amazing sometimes that you can call the same organization three different times and you get three different answers, right? And you think, isn't this the same organization? Aren't there ways to better coordinate the work within an organization so that we're all 
on the same page? Well, that's one of the things that we talk about in this class, right? How do you design an organization so that we do have a common purpose, so that we do put the right systems in place so that so that we are working towards a common goal? And what are the challenges that make that really difficult to do? Uh, ex excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Lindsay. Let's see, Addie. There we go. Um, one thing our organization is seeing Let's see. I think you're on mute, Eddie. There we go. Okay. Um, our organization is seeing a lot of re uh, unknowns because we are in the middle of a merger. And so we have a whole complete restructuring that's causing, you know, we have a lot of turnover. And then people who are still present within the organization then are wondering what their jobs are going to look like, if they're going to have jobs. And that causes a lot of um, angst within, you know, each department trying to figure out what the best next step forward is when you don't know what's going on at the upper levels as much. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Addie. Great, uh, great, great comment. And that's, that's a common challenge that organizations often face, right? I, I'm sure many of you have been through lots of different reorganizations in the, in the, in the places where you work. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, right? And what are some of the reasons why organizations uh, re restructure like that? And what are some of the pros and cons, right? Uh, what, 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 what are some of the reasons, but, but also what are some of the drawbacks of that, right? And, and let's say you're a, you're a change agent and you're tasked with leading a reorganization. What are some of the things that you would want to think about as you're trying to make that process as smooth as possible? Because you're right, it does create lots of angst and it does create lots of uncertainty. And... Sometimes it feels like the right structure and the right design is, is a moving target. And so how do we deal with some of that uncertainty that inevitably, inevitably we're going to face? Thank, thanks, Addie. Great. Let's see, Casey. Um, something that our organization struggles with right now is um, properly documenting SOPs and communicating our the different ways things get done, I guess, or ways to um, kind of work together to solve problems. Uh, a lot of, there's a lot of, well, that's not something in my department. Let me direct you over here <laughs> kind of a thing, like our first um, speaker was saying, and just having proper communication and documentation on how each thing is done is something that I think it's a constantly moving target. You're always having new employees. You're always having uh, new training opportunities, but I guess it's just something that we are still working on. Okay, excellent. And again, not an uncommon problem. It turns out that some of the problems that you're facing in your organizations, you're not the first people to face those issues. And it turns out that people have studied these problems for a long time. And so part of what we'll do in this class is try to introduce you to some theory and some principles of how we might respond to some of these challenges, challenges that are inherent in organizations. Let's see, we got, we've got one more. Let's see, uh, Magdalene. Hi, good morning. Um, well, th the organization that I am working in, um, they have been successful for many years. But now, as the world is changing, the outside environment is changing, how can we become the change agent uh, to convince that successful organization to prepare for the future? That's my question. That's I, I love that. You'll love session four that we talk about. Uh, one of the things we talk about in session four in this class, we talk about the concept of a competency trap. Did you know that sometimes when you get really good at something, watch out, you may be sowing the seeds of your eventual downfall, right? And organizations find this over and over again, right? Sometimes the most successful companies, they get really good at doing one thing and they put all kinds of resources into doing that one thing really well. And they build structures in their organization to do that thing much more efficiently. Well, that's great until the world around us changes. And then sometimes too many organizations find themselves ill-equipped to respond to the changes in a, in a dynamic world, right? So, so we'll talk about that very challenge, Magdalene. That's, that, that's great. I see in chat all kinds of different challenges. I would imagine we could spend way more than an hour just talking about challenges that you've seen in your organizations. And we all have lots of stories of, 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 of those challenges and Maybe ways that we've tried to tried to face those, but we're not going to do that. Okay, again, this is just to hopefully 
give you a sense of the relevance of what we'll talk about in this class, right? Um, th th this this class will will we'll dive into some of these common challenges that lots of organizations face and see if we can't learn some things about how to how to best address those. Okay. So we said that this class is all about organizations. And so one of the things, we're gonna do a quick activity, okay? When you showed up for our mock live session, you didn't know that we were gonna test your artistic abilities. But we're actually doing, we're gonna do a breakout group as we think about how do we conceptualize organizations, right? If, if that's what this class is all about, let, let's, let's see how do we conceptualize this idea of an organization. So here's your task. We're gonna get you into breakout groups. You're gonna be with a group of four or five people and you're going to have to draw an organization. Well, not really draw an organization. You're going to draw a picture that represents an organization. Okay. Now, I've taught MBA students for a long time. And I know if I don't tell you this, every single one of you is going to draw an org chart. Okay. So the only rule of this game or of this activity, you can't draw an org chart. Okay. Be creative. Draw a picture that might be some sort of a metaphor that helps us to learn something about an organization. Okay. So get together in your breakout groups. Um, you're going to have, have 10 minutes to draw a picture that's going to teach us something about organizations. Then we're going to come back and give you a chance to share what did you draw and what can we learn from this drawing about organizations. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, divide up and, and get into your breakout groups. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you had a good uh, discussion with your breakout groups and that gives you a little bit of, of a sense of what we do during class, right? It's not just me talking at you, but you have opportunities to interact with your classmates as well. So I wanna see what you came up with. Um, so Tom will actually call on folks. If you can raise your hand, uh, you'll have the opportunity. You can either share your screen if you did something or if you scribbled something on a piece of paper, maybe you can hold it up. Uh, to your camera, but uh, we'd, we'd love to see some of the drawings that you came up with. So tell us what you drew and then explain to us a little bit of what, what can we learn about organizations from your drawing. And if you don't raise your hand, maybe you can put in chat uh, what, what, what you did as well, okay? And we have two raised hands. So the first was Diane. I will unmute. And I will lower my hand. <laughs> All right. So um, we had a really good discussion and uh, lots of great ideas. What we ended up coming up with, and we did look in the chat to see if there was something we could draw. And we ended up going with a piece of paper. I don't, you probably can't see it. But we drew a bunch of different cogs of different sizes because people across an organization, they might be larger or smaller. But each of those cogs ha are fit together perfectly. And when they're working in sync, you help to build your brand. You help to build your organization. And everybody is in that same tune and in tune with the same thing. Any cog that is misplaced or missing an element, the whole thing falls apart. So it's really important that organizations have a 360 view of what you're doing and all working in unison. Fantastic. So organizations are kind of like cogs. They're interconnected. When one thing moves in one part of the organization, it's going to affect other parts of the organization. So it's important to realize that interdependence uh, b between the different parts of the organization. Excellent. You said it well. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Thanks. All right, let's 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 hear from a couple others. Yes, hi. Sorry about that. I had to unmute myself. So um, I guess the symbol we have here, uh, let me show it. <clears throat> Can you guys see me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we actually um, pioneered a new, uh, well, uh, uh, an innovative paradigm of organizational dynamics um, that's quite innovative because we call it the mothership paradigm in that okay. it um, represents an organization because in this mothership UFO or, or spacecraft, uh, is about 10 different alien civilizations from the reptilians to the greys, humans, uh, the Nordic race, among others. And they all have different um, specialties and talents that they add to this mothership as they navigate the galaxy. And they're one intergalactic organization together. So um, that's why we chose the mothership. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Diego. Um, 
So sometimes, I don't know if you've had this experience, but I have, sometimes walking into a new organization does feel a little bit like stepping onto a new planet, right? Uh, yeah. you, you look around and there's all kinds of things that you don't understand or don't recognize. Sometimes there's a language uh, that gets used that you may not understand all the acronyms uh, that, that, that are being used. And even within a within an organization, sometimes there are vast differences. You know, you go to the engineering department versus the marketing department, it feels like a totally different place, right? Um, excellent. So I think it's important to recognize that even within one organization, there's lots of different parts, right, uh, of, of that organization that may look very different in, in, in a lot of fundamental ways. Thanks, thanks Diego. Uh, let's hear from, uh, maybe, maybe we've got time for two more. Not quite yet for this exercise. Um, I can share my screen. It's a horrible clip art, um, but we kind of imagine a corporation or a company like a human with all of the different pieces having to work together to um, create a success for the whole. And so we kind of thought of the ideas of, you know, the head might be the organizational leadership, mouth, ears might be HR, but also interpersonal communication, eyes might be quality, hands would be like the hands-on functioning. And in our group, we had clinical care and manufacturing um, that we work in. And so we thought, you know, clinical care would be doctors, nurses, aides, manufacturing might be building. Every single company uses transport, logistics, things like that. Um, to keep them going. And then organs would be like the behind the scenes stuff, customer service, procurement, billing, things like that. Um, and then how people present themselves, their care, their clothing might be marketing and sales. Um, but the important one's the heart, which would be uh, the motivation and spirit that people bring to the organization to keep it going, keep it running and all keep working with each other. So uh, okay. we sort of see it as a human. Excellent. So you can see how that that analogy of organizations like a human body uh, could 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 work, right? Um, again, lots of different parts that are working in 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 different ways, but working together uh, to to provide life, right? Uh, excellent. All right, we got time for one more. Um, Ameth, I saw you in in chat. Uh, do you want to share what, what what your group came up with? Yeah, absolutely. I'll share my screen. It's not as fancy as uh, others that I've seen so far. So it's very MVP-ish. Um, can, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. <clears throat> so I think for the first few minutes, we're just trying to figure out how to make the whiteboard to work. Um, but then um, essentially, we, the way we imagine an organization is like a box. So, uh, like it's like this kind of rectangular box. And within the box, we have different Lego pieces that could fit together, like finance, sales, compliance, marketing, accounting, HR, R&D operations, product, for all to come together nicely and fit in nicely for it to be a well-run machine. So this is how we imagined an org um, that comes together, the different divisions and the Lego pieces come together. Okay, awesome. All right, so, so far by my count, we have an organization is like COGS that work together. We've got organizations that are like alien spaceships. Uh, we have organizations that are like the human body. We've got organizations that are like blocks. Uh, I, I think you even said Legos there. So here's my question. Which one of these is the right way to think about an organization? Wh wh which of you got the right answer on our first, uh, on, on, on our first test in, in, in this mock class? There's well, the, the truth is that all of them. Yeah, well, that, that, that's exactly right. You know, uh, there, there's not one best way to think about an organization. In fact, I would suggest that each one of your drawings helps us to see some things that maybe some of the other drawings don't do a very good job of helping us see. And but but each of your drawings probably has some limitations, right? Each of your drawings points out some important things about organizations, but but also maybe ha has some limitations as well. I'd like to use that uh, just as kind of an object lesson as we start thinking about organizations, right? I've done this activity with lots of different groups over the years, and there's some commonalities, right? If you, if you compare the drawings that lots of people make over, over time, you start to see some commonalities that may start to help us understand what do we mean when we talk about an organization. So a lot of drawings 
will have some common features, right? Typically, when people draw organizations, there's something that shows this idea of an organization being goal-directed, right? There, there, there's a purpose behind uh, this, this particular organization. And there's some sort of structure and activity system, right? Um, so, you know, when we talk about COGS, well, that's a coordinated activity system where stuff has to work together, right? So, so most, most of these drawings have, have some element of that. Organizations are social entities. That just means up, that, that, that means they're made up of people and organizations don't exist in a vacuum. They have to be connected to the external environment. And all of a sudden, when you put all of those commonalities between different drawings together, you start to form what may be the basis of a definition of what organizations really are. What, what are we talking about when we talk about organizations? Where the, there are these goal-directed entities, they've got a deliberate structured uh, coordination system. Uh, they're made up of people and they interact with the external environment. Now, I think we can take this object lesson one step further because one of the things we talk about in this class is what we'll call organizational theory. Now, theory sometimes gives a bad rap with practicing managers, right? A lot of practicing managers say, like to say, well, that's good for you, Mike. You're a professor in your ivory tower, but as a, as a hard-nosed executive, I don't need any of this theory, right? Well, it turns out the pictures that you drew, I wouldn't suggest that those are theories, right? But, but they're comparable to organizational theories in a couple ways, right? What a theory does is a theory tries to give us a simplified view of the complex world around us. And what a theory does is it helps us to highlight certain things that we might not see otherwise, right? Now, just like your picture, every theory is going to have some limits, right? Not, not one theory is going to give us everything that we want to know about organizations. But what we do in this class is we try to introduce you to lots of different theories of organizations that'll help you see different things as a manager that will then help you to be a better leader and a better manager within your organization, okay? So everybody has theories. We all have theories of how we think the world works. That's, that's what a theory is, right? It's our explanation of why the world is the way that it is. And a good theory actually can be super practical and super helpful for you as a manager to make sense of these complex entities that we call organizations. So part of what we're trying to do in this class is help you understand why organizations look the way that they do. People have been studying organizations for a long time, and we actually know some stuff about why organizations face certain problems. Um, the, best or the, the, the best organizational theories help us to see causal relationships so that we can say, hey, if I make a change to this variable, here's the outcome that I'm likely to experience. And again, good theory, if you apply it appropriately as a manager, can really help you to be more effective in your organization. So that's part of what we try to do in this class, again, is expose you to lots of different theories so that you can be a more effective practicing manager. In fact, in this class, we talk a lot about this inverted triangle diagram, right? Uh, theory is kind of way up here at a high, sometimes even an abstract level. But what we, what we try to do is we try to take that theory, that explanation of why an organization looks the way that it does, why this problem exists in organizations. Then we try to draw out principles. And principles are just guidelines, right? They're general rules that we can follow as managers that help us to understand what we should typically do when faced with this type of a situation, right? When we're faced with this type of a problem, in general, here's the type of structures that we should put into place, right? And then at the most narrow part of this, of this triangle, we have what, what we'll call application, right? Where you know your particular organization way better than I do, right? Way better than your classmates do. And you can take that theory and you can take those general principles and say, in this particular circumstance, Here's how this theory and this principle should be applied. So you've got theory is all about why, right? Why does the world look the way that it does? Principle is all about general guidelines. What should we typically do? And application is all about how do I implement this in my particular set of circumstances? And so in this class, sometimes we'll be doing a case and we'll look at how somebody applied a particular theory, right? And then we'll see, well, can we draw out some more abstract principles that might be 
applicable in, in, in other domains. Sometimes we'll start it in, in theory land, right? And we'll talk about these abstract theories and say, well, what does that mean for you in your particular job function? Okay. So again, part of what we try to do in this class is we try to go up and down this, uh, the, this, the, this, this triangle of theory, principle, and application. All right. In the few minutes we have left, I want to give you, we, we drew some pictures of organizations. I want to give you a framework that we talk about in this class that we can think of as different pictures of organizations, okay? So there's three perspectives that people have often used to try to understand organizations and some of the problems that organizations face. And we'll call those a rational system approach, a natural system approach, and an open system approach. The first people that studied organizations, they really looked at organizations from a rational system lens. And if you had to draw a picture, the picture would be an organization is like a machine. And with any machine, you've got inputs, you go through some process, and then it spits out outputs, right? So we can think about an organization in those kinds of terms. And we think about the formal structures of an organization. We think about power that usually accrues to people at the top, right? Think about a formal org chart, kind of gives us this rational view of what an organization is all about. And we, when we try to look at whether an organization is effective or not, we can look at easily measurable things like profitability, right? Or efficiency. Those are the kinds of things we think about from this rational system approach. Now, I would imagine that some of you feel like, yeah, my, my organization feels kind of like being part of a machine. I feel like I'm a cog in the machine. But that's not a complete picture, right? That, that gives us one slice of what an organization is. But people came along and said, wait a second. Organizations are really made up of people. And people sometimes behave in non-machine-like ways. And that's what, we, that's what we call the natural system approach. We, we recognize that organizations are made up of people. People do weird stuff when you put them in organizations, right? Uh, they develop cultures. They sometimes fight about things. Sometimes there's not just one purpose of an organization, but there's lots of purposes that an organization is trying to pursue simultaneously. And so we form coalitions and we have politics and uh, we, we have big fights about what should we be pursuing as an organization. Sometimes the formal structure of the organization isn't even the most important structure because there are informal structures within an organization that really have a lot to do with your ability to get stuff done in an organization. Does that resonate with anybody? Does that sound like your organization feels like a, a natural system? If the picture, if, if we're drawing a picture of that approach, maybe we're drawing a, a picture of a family, right? Sometimes a dysfunctional family, but a group of people that are getting together, right? So a rational system is all about organizations like a machine. A natural system says, wait, there's people involved. So the picture is organizations are really kind of like a, a, a family or a community of people. But then people came along and said, wait, there's something missing here because both a rational system approach and a natural system approach is really insular. It's, it's, it's focused just on the inside of the organization. What about all the stuff that's going on outside of the organization? And that's what we call an open systems approach to thinking about organizations, right? Where we have to be aware of everything that's going on outside of our organization. We got to be aware of competitors. We got to be aware of government regulations. We got to be aware of a pandemic. Uh, we have to be aware of general state of the economy and inflation and all. There's a thousand different things going on outside of the organization that are going to have an impact on how we operate inside the organization. Okay, so those if, if you had to draw a picture, you could draw a picture of, you know, an adaptive organism, right? Uh, just like in the in the natural world, if if an organism doesn't adapt, it's not going to survive. The same thing is true of organizations, right? You have to build an organization that can adapt to the changing outside world or else you're not going to survive. All right. There's my hundred years of organizational theory in three minutes. But we've got those three pictures. We've got organization is like a machine. Organization is like a family or a group of people in a natural systems approach. And an organization is like an adaptive organism that has to adapt to external circumstances. That's what we call the open systems approach. All right, so we've got a poll. We do lots of polls in my class. That's another way to, uh, for, for folks to participate. So can we, can we have this poll? I want you to think about your own organization. Which of these three pictures or which of these three perspectives best represents your particular organization.
Is it rational? Is it natural or open system? All right, we'll give you just five more seconds. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and show the results of that poll. It looks like we had over forty percent said open system, and then next was rational system, and then in third place, but with a substantial uh, number of people said said natural system. And I see some people in, in in chat saying, "Wait, this is this is not a fair question, right? This is this is hard to choose." Well, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, anybody want to share with me wh why did you choose one of these perspectives? What is it about your organization that makes you say, "Yeah, the machine picture is 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 more relevant," or you know, this adaptive organism picture that that that's more relevant? Any, anybody willing to share? What what did you choose? I can speak if you want. Yeah, please. So. I picked rational, and the reason for that is um, we are a business at the end of the day, and there are financial obligations, so there's a lot of rational <laughs> ways that, that we, and being a technology company, there there's a lot of regulations, there's a lot of things that we have to do. That said, I do agree with everyone, it's a blend. Um, the, I thought about the open, because we are do reflect to the competition and all the things that are going on and regulations, however... We're not that nimble to move that quickly, which ties us back to that rational. So that was the reason okay. for that. So there's some aspects of your organization where you say, yeah, this feels like a machine, right? And we have to have processes in place, right? Just just like a machine. Um, and, and there's inputs and there's outputs, but you, you can also see some other aspects of these other pictures, these other lenses that that, that might tell us something important as well. All right, let's, let's have may, maybe two more. Greg, do you want to... Uh, share what what did you say for your organization? Yeah, so um, I, I said rational system as well too, and par perhaps uh, coming from a, a tech background as well too. Uh, I see the world in machines, but um, but we have a, a traditional org structure, and um, each team kind of has their function of what that that team is expected to uh, deliver. And so everything just kind of seems to fit uh, into that cohesive um, machine and uh, and it produces a, a result. Okay. All right. Excellent. And then maybe one more. Is it is it Jin? Uh, yes. Yes. This is a Chen. Uh, yeah. I selected the open system um, uh, there uh, because that um, I am working in the uh, telecom uh, technology company. Uh, we see that uh, we are really being impacted uh, by outside factors. Certainly, we know that we also have to have processes, procedures, a lot of things, and also the uh, individuals have to interact with each other within the company. So it definitely looks like um, they are uh, rational and uh, natural as well. But I, we really feel greatly about the uh, outside um, factors, like uh, when, when there is um, this uh, wave of... Uh, um, say uh, layoffs for tech companies, right? We do that as well, and uh, yeah. when uh, and the constantly we have to come up with new technologies, uh, new services, uh, no service, uh, the uh, product offerings uh, for the customers because of those competitions, and also internally impact us is the uh, the latest technologies like even the generative AI. Uh, we are starting working on that to how to use this latest technologies to um, improve our internal uh, the uh, organization's proficiency and also offer the uh, the services and products to outside uh, customers. Okay, so there's a real focus on innovation. It sounds like right, which is adaptability. You've got to respond mm -hmm. to what's going on in the external environment. But again, it sounds like you can also see some of these other lenses as well. So that that begs the question, yeah. right? Uh, mm -hmm. if, if we have a test and we say, which of these perspectives is the right way to view an organization, what would you say? Well, um, I think this I came up in chat, right? Op open system for our, uh, for our organization, because uh, we see that the innovation is a must for us to survive. Okay. Yeah. Well, and par part of what I would suggest is that 
that, that that's not a good question, right? <laughs> uh, again, we in in the poll we kind of force you to choose one, but the truth is that every organization is a rational system. Every organization is a natural system, and every organization is an open system, right? Every organization has to put processes in place and become more efficient and more machine-like. Every organization has people, and you got to deal with the complexity that happens when when you have people involved. And every organization has to adapt to to the external environment. And and one of the problems that we sometimes run into as managers is we have one lens that we view our organization through. And so we miss a whole set of issues that are actually critical to the survival and the effectiveness of, of, of our organization. So the truth is that organizations are all three of these things, right? These are just lenses, right? Have you ever been to a, a 3D movie and, and, and you go and you put on those 3D lenses and all of a sudden stuff pops out of the movie screen? Well, that's what these are, right? These are, these are lenses that help you see different parts of an organization. And organizations are so complex that sometimes we need those simplified lenses for us to make sense of what's going on. And so part of what we try to do in this class is help you to develop your own lens through which you can view organizations, right? The best managers are able to view an organization through all three of these different lenses. One of the things that we talk about in the class is sometimes there are tensions, right? Sometimes as organizations grow, they start to feel chaotic. And so you put all this rational system bureaucracy in, into the organization. And, and, and sometimes that's necessary, but sometimes if you're not caref careful, you suck the life out of the organization or you make it so it can't adapt to, to the external environment. So you're always managing tensions between these different views of organizations. And so that's part of what we try to help you develop some skills to be able to manage those tensions and to be able to use these different lenses to see different aspects of your organization that are actually absolutely critical to your organization's survival. So that's a little preview of what we do in a live session. I hope I, I hope this has been fun and, and, and useful. I hope you have a couple takeaways, right? Uh, I, I, think, I hope you come away with this idea that, yeah, theory might actually matter for me as a manager, right? That learning the why and understanding what are some of those general principles can actually be a really useful skill set uh, for, for, for me as a manager. Theories help us frame the way we think about problems, right? They, they help us see different problems that we might not see otherwise. And so this whole idea of what's the theory, what's the general principle, how do we apply that in my circumstance, I think that's a useful framework uh, for, for managers to use. And just this idea is if you're going to be an effective manager, you've got to be able to view your organization through multiple lenses, right? You got to have multiple perspectives uh, that, that, that you can bring to your organization. And that's the whole purpose of this class is to help you develop and then refine uh, your, your own perspective and your own theory of what should happen in organizations. Thanks so much for being with us today. Um, we've got a, a, a few minutes. If you have any questions, either about the class or about the program, um, hopefully this has been informative and uh, you get a little bit of a sense of what life might be like in a live session in our iDegrees programs. And we have Lindsay. Yeah, I have a question about the term natural system. Um, if yeah. these systems are ma uh, man-made, why do we call them natural? Oh, that's that that, that that's a really good uh, that, that that that's a really good question. Uh, I I, th I think that's just the 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 term that people have used, and it's just in in contrast to the idea of a machine like, um, you know, lifeless kind of cold view of a of, of an organization versus natural system is a living thing, right? And, and when you think about human interactions within organizations, that's really what we're focused on when we talk about natural system. That's a good, that's a good question, Lindsay. Thank you. Let's see, Edward, did you have a question? Uh, yeah. Uh, I have a question about uh, three, uh, three uh, step uh, theory apply a uh, principle. Uh, what do you speak about changing? Because I don't understand you have fi finished on theory, uh, you start in a planning applies. Yeah, well, that, that's part of what we do in the class, right? Is we, we, we try to give you practice of taking a theory, which might be abstract and maybe kind of hard to uh, apply. Because, say, well, because I don't understand. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, uh, what, what is the change in story about applied? 
because you uh, you you device of uh, free uh, step or apply principle iterary. I I understand. I uh, good understand your 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 picture. Yeah. So so that that just becomes a framework of part of what we do in the class, right? So we'll we'll go back to that in different sessions. So we may be talking about culture. But we'll say, okay, what's the theory? What what kind of theories are out there about why cultures develop and why cultures in organizations look the way that they do? Okay, what are some general principles that we can take out of that? Okay, what does that mean for your particular organization? What can you do as a leader to build an effective culture in 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 your uh, in, in 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 your organization or your part of the organization? So so that's just kind of like a meta framework that that we use that we go back to periodically in the class to try to help people take these big theoretical ideas and actually put them into practice, right? A theory doesn't do much good if we don't put it into practice. And so that's just, we, 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 we focus a lot on application in this class to try to make the things that we talk about in this class relevant right now for what you're doing in your, in, in your organizations. Kate, did you have uh, anything that you wanted to wrap up with? I think you had a, a, a few notes. Yes. Um, I First of all, thank you so much, Professor Bednar, um, for leading us through one of your live sessions today. I'm so excited that everyone was able to experience just um, what high engagement, what that part of our courses looks like today. So thank you. Um, I do want to kind of close out here today. There were some great questions. I think we're going to wrap it up just to be mindful of everyone's time here, right? Uh, just at that 60 minute mark. Um, I do want to note uh, that um, on your screen, you should see right now a QR code uh, that you can scan with your phone. If you're interested in talking with our admissions team, um, go ahead and scan that, that QR code and we will reach out to you to talk about your professional goals and which credential is right for you. We have a lot of different credentials and a lot of options for you. So, um, and then the second part that you see on the screen is that I would like to also offer an uh, application fee waiver for our March term application. So um, as you fill out your application, there will be a section that you can indicate that you have a fee waiver and you'll click that box and then you'll go ahead and put that code in. Um, this is for the deadline uh, next week, February 1st, which is our final deadline for a March start. I'm also going to email that code to you. So don't worry if you um, if you don't have a pen or pencil to write that down. Um, but really, I, I really hope that you gain some valuable knowledge today and you're inspired uh, to submit your application soon. It's OK if you're not quite ready to, to do that. We have our fall and our summer applications opening up here on February 2nd. So that's right around the corner. Please reach out to us with questions and we are happy to talk through, um, as I said, which credential is right for you. So thanks again, Professor Bednar, for your time today. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Have a good one. Hope to see some of you in class. We can talk more about some of these, uh, some of these ideas. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.